that raises the problem of transportation, and I wish somebody would work out a, a problem there. Well, that's, uh, uh, I believe it's good to have a lot of little district school, that is, uh, the lower <laughs> grades. They can get as good training in that little school book as they can fit in the biggest you school. You like to see the little district schools, is that right? For the grade. For the grade. I do want to congratulate Carl Hamilton for widening his vision. I thought maybe he'd come up with a one or two school proposition. <laughs> now he's got it five to eight. And perhaps with a little bit more study, he'll come to the eleven. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> I still think it's very important that we keep these eleven high schools going because there's something going on at these eleven high schools that makes it a place to fit to live. And we take care of those junctures as good as the big schools, I think. Good enough. Walt, you look unhappy. Well, I think the picture that's shown here is uh, as the uh, enrollment of various schools depicted there on the map. Right over here. Is not indicative of the available territory <laughs> to those consolidations. Uh, we've had a battle with Eldor for quite a number of years. There's a lot of territory available between the two. Well, I wish you'd say something about Iowa Falls, but you didn't. And uh, <laughs> Whitten is right on the county line, and a lot, some of our present consolidation is in Grundy County, and there's also considerable territory available in Grundy County. There's enough territory available in these rural school districts at the present time they're not in a consolidation to make every one of the present consolidated schools with enough territory and enough financial backing to have a good school as the big schools have. And I contend that uh, the larger the school, the less chance the individual pupil has to take part in any scholastic activities, whether it is of an educational nature or athletic nature. Well, Miss, uh, go ahead. You of all people, in the first place, redrawing these lines out there isn't going to make any more high school students. In Hardin County or Grundy County, all the high school students now go to a high school by one means or another, tuition or otherwise. And you of all people know that the number of people living on farms is constantly getting smaller. Our farms are getting larger and larger. And the trend in Iowa, as many other rural areas, is for fewer farm pupils, fewer pupils <laughs> going to high school. We already have high schools at a minimum. The long pull, that'll be even smaller. May I answer that? I think so. Go right ahead. <laughs> Eldora has been crawling out and getting these tuition pupils till they're overcrowded. We have the capacity for twice the pupils we have at the present time. Why have them build a big school to take up off territory that we could take use of without any additional building? Let's hear from the ladies, huh? Mrs. Cook's been shaking her head like this. Mrs. Well, Cook. Well, I agree with Mr. Hall. I think that uh, we have a lot of small high schools that aren't built with capacity and that might uh, take additional <coughs> students. They have uh, adequate room, they have good teachers, and if we let those schools have them, instead of sending them to the crowded school, we'd be better off, and the students would be better off. That's really what we're asking for, is for better education for our youngsters. Mrs. Weaver? I'd like to ask a question of these people who talk about these very small schools. Will you talk just a little louder? I can't hear. Uh, do, they, do they think that Iowa Falls or Eldora would take somebody out of their schools, or people who live in town, and send them down to these schools? I'd like to answer that. We All don't right. want them out of the town. Yeah. Uh, we want to take the area that's around where we should have it right now and uh, leave the town students in town. We'll take our country students out in our country and we'll give them the kind of things they need. Now look over there uh, mm -hmm. at Ashley. Uh, in our small school, we have practically every one of those things except the football that they have there uh, in outside activities. And we rush our youngsters to You're death. speaking for Radcliffe. I'm speaking for New Providence. Or New Providence, that's uh -huh. right, New Providence. Uh, Fern, do you have golf or New Providence? <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. I didn't notice golf was on there. <laughs> Just swimming pool. Swimming. <laughs> we have uh, more activities than they can get around. If we had more students, we'd have more students to do it. You know, I've been sitting here listening to you folks dividing up my pupils or my <laughs> children. I come from a district that hasn't any high school. And every one of you is only talking about how are we going to divide up these country youngsters to come to our school. 
I wish you'd give them a little consideration. I wish you'd give some consideration. Who's going to pay this bill when you've done that thing? Just let me give you a few figures. There's $42 million worth of taxable property in Hardin County. $30 million of that is in on the farms. Only $12 million of that is in, in the cities and towns. Well, we're about an average county, a balanced county. There are just as many youngsters living to be educated in the cities and towns as there are in the country. In other words, when you get through with this here reorganization, the country people, the farm people, are going to pay $3 for every $1 that you fellows do in the cities and towns. In other words, it's going to take us three times as much to educate one of our youngsters on the farm than it is to your cities and towns. You're talking about high price of per pupil cost. Whose cost? Our cost for the t on, the, on the country will climb, will be the highest they've ever been if you go all through with this. What we need is some fundamental changes, Senator, in the support laws, in getting this support, as you said, and rightly said, that education should be supported by all of not only property, but all income in the state. And most of the in income and the ability to support a school is not in property, but is otherwise. As an illustration of that, I have two boys, both college graduates. One is in town, living in town, has a town job, has about a $5,000 a year income. The other boy on the farm, in order to have that income, has to have at least $75,000 worth of property and pay from $400 to $500 taxes. <coughs> Half of that goes for schools. The other boy, through the income tax, will pay $8 a year to support the schools. That isn't fair. We need some fundamental changes before you fellows been on the board can do anything to make this right. You can't propose a plan in Hardin County that will be fair to the farmers and to the rural property taxpayers until you do it. What it's got to be done in the legislature. What you say is just as applicable to <coughs> what the, thing that, ben, so the thing, thing that Ben has suggested as to any other. Absolutely. I'm talking and as about it is now, the town people have been building the high schools and the country kids have been coming in on a tuition basis, which doesn't take into account uh, the capital cost of the high schools. That's, that's, farmers that's, have been getting a free ride to that right, extent. That, that's is that right? No, no, I don't agree with you there. Well, I sure it is. The farmers Obviously. have never, have always paid all of the additional cost that it's been to you fellows. You go back to your figures and I'll, I'll prove that to you in every case. I feel just like a judge here, Ben. Not you, the whole you, cost of what you, you have, have there in town, but the I want to ask you to whistle. Listen here, man. You, you can't get into this situation without talking just exactly like you're talking because we've got to get some fundamental things here across. And that, that's the idea that I think every one of you agree with this proposition, that the education of our youth is of so much public importance that there should be a substantial minimum levy on all the taxable real and personal property in the various counties of the state by uh, whether that particular school district has a single pupil in it or not. I agree with you. Man, you uh, now, my point is this, the 15 mills, Straight across the board is not an unreasonable levy, just like the Senate bill that passed this year and didn't get out of the House. It, a 15 mil levy as a base. And then above that, the, the rural areas get a state aid, agricultural land tax credit. And so they're not going to be hurt above that so far as land is concerned. I'm going to have to get a job as a referee. So why, why don't we <laughs> quit kidding ourselves about this thing and get back of some fundamental legislation that you want the legislature to pass down there? All right, Senator, even, uh, even on a 50 mil basis, I think your principle is sound, but you're going too high because you're freezing two-thirds of the school costs onto the property, and that's too much. Get it within reason, and it's all right. It's 100% sound. On that 50 mil basis in Hardin County, the farmers would pay $450,000, the cities and towns $192,000. The percentage is exactly the same. Did everybody hear that question? Uh, Wendell had a question here. What was it? Did that well, I tell you, why not bring it down to 10 mils for everybody? But that no. why, not, why not put 15 mils across the well, board? You, you know, from a statewide standpoint, that would yield over $60 million in the state I of Iowa. Know, Senator Bates and I, I like this. Uh, ben has a point here. Remember, we're talking about uh, states for 11 districts or five state districts. I would ben, like to agree, Mr. Moderator, with what Mr. Lauterbaugh said, that we need some foundation understanding and some fundamental structures. And I'd like to agree with the senator. Whether 15 mils is the right answer or not, I don't know. I think that if we could even get started at a seven and a half or eight mil levy, it's starting a procedure that we might be able to build on. The thing is that I doubt whether we can get a 15 mil levy passed on that basis and it might be better to start lower and it might be fairer till we see where we're going because if we start on top 
Maybe we're doing something that we'll be sorry of and that we shouldn't do. I'd like to put Mr. Clampett at ease here as far as Buckeye is concerned, because if Buckeye, I said this with a program of the people and for the people and by the people, and if Buckeye elects to retain their school as is, they have, I don't know of a law in the world that'll take it away from them, even <laughs> under this plan. All the, all